on and get your praise on. You know we got it going on at Third Church. At Third Church. Oh, well, the word is broken down for you. It's so easy, it'll make you want to move at Third Church. At Third Church. At Third Church. Good morning and happy Sunday, Third Church. My name is David. Thanks for worshiping with us. We're so glad you're joining us today. Here's what's happening at Third Presbyterian Church. If you're new to Third Church, we welcome you with open arms. Connect with us at thirdchurchstl.org connect and fill out our online connect card. 
and Pastor Cordes will follow up with you and answer any questions that you may have about the church. There's still time to sign up for the Sister Strut Walk happening on Saturday, October 5th. The Women's Ministry has been gifted five paid registrations, but you'll still need to register to claim one. For more information, reach out to Gwendolyn Bogan or any member of the Women's Ministry team. The deadline to register is September 21st, and both men and women are welcome to participate. Our ministry is continuing to help make a difference within our community, but we need your help to reach more lives. There are several ways for you to give, either online, by check, or through our dedicated giving app. Visit thirdchurchscl.org slash give to learn more and to contribute. Every Child's Hope is holding its annual golf tournament at Old Hickory Golf Club and Rising in Righteousness is seeking volunteers to assist with welcoming guests, registration, check-in, games, and refreshments from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. It's a great opportunity to support a worthy cause while spending the day at the golf course. And guess what? We'd love for you to join us. To volunteer, email risinginrighteousness at gmail.com. The Usher Ministry Family Cookout is around the corner, so if you enjoy grilling, music, games, and great company, this event is perfection for you. Join us on Sunday, September 22nd at noon at Laramore Park. This is an event for not just the whole family, but your friends as well, so we hope to see you there. You have the opportunity to fellowship with others while diving deeper into the sermon during our Tuesday and Thursday evening Bible studies. Join us and visit thirdchurchstl.org slash Bible studies for the same materials and the Zoom links. Thanks again for spending your Sunday morning with us. We hope that you'll stay connected throughout the week by following us on YouTube. If you have any questions about anything you've heard today, or you would like to learn more about what Third Church is all about, visit us online at thirdchurchstl.org. We will see you next week. Saints, let us go to God in prayer. Merciful, gracious, and loving Father, we come to you today with humbled hearts. Thanking you for once again allowing us to come to the throne of mercy. Thanking you once again, Father, for allowing us to congregate together to worship and to magnify your holy name. Father God, we ask right now that you will just Please bless our congregation, bless our church family as we prepare to return to in-person service. Father, we pray that you keep us safe and sound when we are together, and we ask that you continue to keep us safe and sound when we are apart from one another. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over our pastor as he brings forth the preach word. Watch over our first lady and their entire family and our entire third church family. Father, we pray that our worship is acceptable and pleasing to you, and we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins and our unrighteousness. And Lord God, when everything is done and we cannot do any more, that we will hear you say one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. Father God, it is with these prayers and these that we ask in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen.
And good morning, Third Church family. Great news today. We start the study of 2 Kings, which drops us at 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. Let's look. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah says to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha says, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah says to him, stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah says to him, stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right, and to the left, and the two of them crossed over to dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah says to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, 
the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his old clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen from him and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of prophets from Jericho who were watching says, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we, your servants, have 50 able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has picked him up and set him down on some mountain or in some valley. No, Elisha replied, do not send them. But they persisted until he was too ashamed to refuse. So he says, send them. They sent the 50 men who searched for three days but did not find him. When they returned, Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, says to them, didn't I tell you? not to go. May the Lord add a blessing to the hero, reader, and doer of his holy word. And I want to use for his subject today, asking God for what you want, asking God for what you want. Over this past few weeks, we have seen this amazing ministry of the prophet Elijah. And today we will see what it takes to be committed to the call, to the process, to the plan God has for Elisha, who was his disciple, being groomed to take over being God's prophet of Israel. Elijah was about to be taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, and the strength of Elisha's faith and his commitment to the work needed to be fortified by testing. As they were on their way from Gilgal, Elijah says, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. You see, Gilgal was a place of beginning. It was here that the Israelites first celebrated Passover in the promised land. Here, the males born during the wilderness wanderings were circumcised and the covenant was renewed in Joshua 5. This would be an ideal spot to just start his own ministry and leave Elijah. But Elisha says, as surely as the Lord and you live, I will not leave you. So they continued on. You know, there was a remnant of 7,000 who had not bowed down to the idols in Israel. We've talked about that before. And they came to Bethel. And there was a company of prophets at Bethel that came out and says to Elisha, you know, the Lord is going to take your master from you today. Yeah, but look, I'm not trying to hear that right now. I'm focused on who I'm called to follow. Church, don't let opposition shake you. The sons of the prophets were really asking Elisha, why are you still following this old man? The Lord is through with him. He is going to heaven. You would be better off to either stay with us or just go out on your own. Church, they tried to talk him out of his resolve. And I want to tell you today, when you decide to really sell out for God, to receive what God has for you, Commitment will be met with opposition. All around you, there will be people who will do their best to talk you out of it. This is a fact. So many people live non-committed average lives. You know why? Because average lives don't cause waves. Average lives don't attract or repel. But here's another truth. To all saved Christians, Jesus didn't die for you to be average. When Jesus says you are salt of the earth, salt is not an average spice. Just a little changes everything. It makes ways. It causes disruption. Your commitment to Christ changes things around you and changes the people around you. Don't let the crowds keep you average. Don't let them slow you down. Run with Christ. And Elijah said again, stay here at Bethel. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. Bethel is the place of dreams. It was here that Jacob met God and dreamed of angels descending and ascending out of heaven in Genesis 28. Elisha replied the same thing here. I'm with you. No 
matter what. When they arrived in Jericho, there's another company of prophets came up and says, you know, the Lord is going to take your master today. Yes, I do know that. Thank you for telling me, but I'm good. You don't have to keep bringing it up. Jericho, the place of past victories. It was here that Israel had his first military victory in the promised land in Joshua 6. Jericho was also a border town. To pass beyond this location was to enter the wild, a new territory. Elijah said again, stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. Again, this could not shake. Elisha, I'm with you no matter what. Jordan, the place of death. The river represented the boundary for the promised land. This massive river that claimed many lives at times was impassable. To cross it meant to enter into death. It was a formidable barrier that few would ever want to cross. They came to the Jordan. Elijah took his coat, rolled it up, struck the water, divided the water, and the two of them walked on dry ground. Test passed. And Elijah says, I'm about to be taken away. What can I do for you before I'm gone? Elisha said, let me get a double portion of your spirit. Elijah says, you've asked a difficult thing, but if you see me taken away from you, it will be yours. And as they walked together, suddenly a chariot of horses and fire separated the two of them. And Elijah was taken away to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha then took the cloak of Elijah, went back to the Jordan, and he struck the water, and the water divided. And all the other prophets then knew he was now God's prophet to Israel. Before we really get started, I want to talk briefly about these tests that Elisha went through, because we too find ourselves at these same places in our walk with the Lord. Far too many people spend their entire Christian lives in Gilgal, this place of beginnings. They never grow. They never go beyond the basics of Christianity. They desire more from the Lord, but refuse to give any more to the Lord. They never get beyond a mealtime prayer life. Some go as far as Bethel. They catch the vision of God's great work, which must be done. They see the need. They feel the tug. They see some doing the work. They imagine what God could do with them, but they never get past the place of dreaming about what they might do. They never take the next step of making those dreams and visions realities. So for them, service to the Lord is more fantasy than reality. Others stay in their Jerichos. They live in the victories of yesterday. Remember what happened back in the 70s, the 80s, the good old days. Remember when God did this and God did this, but Left in Jericho, they forget that that same God who blessed then is desiring to bless now. Stuck in Jericho is a refusal to trust God and have faith in God for a victory today. Then some come to the Jordan. This is the barrier between the self-life and the spirit life. Few ever take the final step of faith and sell out and go with God all the way. If you read the account in chapter two, when the water was parted, all of the prophets had the opportunity to cross, but only Elisha had the faith and the commitment to cross, to go with Elijah, to receive the double portion. No matter where you are in your journey, it is not God's plan to leave you stuck in a city. Don't allow anything to hinder your progress, but by faith proceed with God. Watch God remove obstacles, reveal his plan and his purpose for your life. The good old days are gone. The great men and women of God in the past are gone. The mantle has been passed to us and we are now responsible for serving the Lord in these days for ourselves and in the next generation. Let me say this, we need God, not the stories about what God did for someone in the past. We need to trust God to do it in us today. And in order for us to do that, we need a double portion. 
Elisha asked to receive a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Listen, the request was not for twice the power that had rested on Elijah. He was asking that the same spirit that had empowered the ministry of this great man of God be given to him as well. What kind of spirit was Elisha asking for? Well, number one, a spirit of faith. Elijah learned to trust in the presence and power of God in this world. He knew that God was in absolute control of every situation. He walked by faith. Number two, a spirit of obedience. Elijah instantly, without question, even when the commands of God made no sense at all, he followed God. Number three, a spirit of courage. Elijah's faith in God and his obedience to God combined to give him the courage to stand for God. Even when others ran away, to stand for God in the midst of opposition of hundreds surrounding him, courage in the face of death. Elisha merely wanted to take over where Elijah left off. He wanted to succeed in what he was being called to do, be the next prophet to Israel. How many of us have prayed for the Spirit of God to empower us to be successful in what we've been called to do. And I say called to do because each and every one of us has been called to do something. God has a plan for all of us, but far too many of us are relying on our natural talent to try to accomplish the plan of God for our life. And for many, that seems good enough. But church, let me tell you, it is not. There was a time when I was relying on my natural talent and it was not pleasing to God because relying on our natural talent will not keep us on our knees praying. It will not keep us seeking the power of the Holy Spirit. Relying on our natural talent will not keep us near the cross. Relying on my natural talent will get me to the Jordan River, but it won't get me across the Jordan River. So if you're at a point where you are unfulfilled by the ministry you are offering to God, it is because you are relying on your natural and not seeking the supernatural. We are at the Jordan, but need the power of the Holy Spirit to part the Jordan, to walk across into the destiny God has for our lives. Elisha is told that he has asked a hard thing for a double portion of his spirit. In other words, it was beyond the power of Elijah to grant such a request. Only God could raise up prophets and give this kind of position, power, and influence. On the surface, Elisha's request seemed a little selfish. It seems as though he was asking for twice the power and twice the glory. In truth, his request is most humble in nature. Elisha knows that Israel still needs a man of God to deliver the word of God, to do the work of God. He also knows that if he is to be that man, that he needs a power that he does not possess. He needs the power of God working in him and through him if he is to accomplish this ministry. Elisha wasn't asking for power, wealth, or position. He was asking to be controlled by the Spirit of God. This request was not about pride. It was about necessity. So our question today, are we asking God for a double portion because we want to be better in his plan for our life? Or are we asking for a double portion because we want our plan for our life accomplished? Is our request of God out of pride and wanting to be seen? Or is it out of necessity that this ministry called Third Church that you have been called to will grow and expand? Elijah tells Elisha that he is to be with him until he's taken out of this world. Then he will have the thing for which he asks. The idea here is that this blessing can be his, but Elisha must remain faithful until the end. It would have been far easier for Elisha to have stayed in one of the towns they passed through. But if he stopped along the way, he would never have received the blessing he desired and so desperately needed. When will we fully realize 
that we will never be able to do what the Lord has saved us, called us to do without the power of God. Far too long, the church has tried to operate in the natural human wisdom and human power. As a result, we have lost the power of God that made us remarkable. We need to seek the Lord for spiritual power in these days. We don't need to get overly concerned about numbers. We don't need to get overly concerned about what others are doing to grow. Our concern is spelled out in Ephesians 5 and 18. It says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. We need to get before the Lord and request an influx of his power, his glory in these days. If we are to get the job done and be successful in ministry individually and collectively, we must have the Spirit of God. Church, we need God and God's power more than we need crowds, money, building, or any of the things we hold so dear. We need God. But church, this kind of blessing and power does not come to the uncommitted. This kind of blessing is reserved for those who will pay the price in prayer and holiness before the Lord. If we are willing to go all the way with the Lord, God will bless our life with his power and his glory. It isn't about pride to ask God to fill us with his spirit and to use us for his glory. It's about knowing we are at the end of our human ability, but there is still a river to be crossed. And without the power of God, we will be stuck in past victories and have nothing to celebrate in the present. The present and future demands God's servant be filled with God's spirit. We need that same spirit of faith, obedience, courage that rested on Elijah to be placed on us. When I think about the African-American community and where we are right now, I reflect when our ancestors were brought from Africa, enslaved, tortured, murdered, all the way up through the civil rights movement. The one thing was true about our people was that we were a people of faith. A people that not only believed in God, but that belief was put to the test each and every day. We went to church. We served in the church. We were a people who gave to the ministry of God financially, and it was sacrificial. And we were filled with the spirit of God. The Montgomery bus boycott would not have been successful without the church financing the whole operation. We were a people who were united. We were focused. And the church was the hub of our community and it kept us rolling forward. You ask, what has happened to our community? You ask, why are things not right? We wonder about drugs and violence and poverty and miseducation. We wonder about the disparity between the haves and the have-nots. We wonder why our churches are not more effective in addressing the ills of our community. It is because we are not seeking the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We are not presenting ourselves as sacrifices to be used by God because we are comfortable coming up to the Jordan and just talking about the past, but not trusting God to strike the water and walk across. We're trying to serve God apart from God. We have stayed in one of the towns when we were supposed to stay close to Elijah and cross the Jordan. So now we don't have that spirit of faith. We don't have the spirit of obedience. We don't have the courage necessary to take back our schools, take back our community, take over elections, transform this world because the church has lost the spirit of God. So we pray today. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We seek the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, send revival today and let it start in me. Holy Spirit of God, have your way. Use me, transform me, give me what I need to make this generation for you. As we sit at the banks of the Jordan, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to strike the water and get on the other side. As we sit at the banks of the Jordan of poverty, abuse, hunger, lack of resources for education, rising cost of 
health care. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to strike the water, part the water, receive and be all that God has spoken us into existence to be. So what do you want today? Is being average good enough for you? Or do we want a double portion in our life today? Do we want to be in a position where the God of heaven is using us for his glory in this world? God is calling you to seek him for the double portion you need for your life, for your family, and for this church. What is your request of God today? What are you asking God for today? I want to thank you for tuning in today. Next week, we're going to continue our study of 2 Kings with a sermon titled, Getting into the Miracle Zone. I pray that you join us as we continue to grow spiritually with our study of the Word of God. Until then, remember, be patient, be kind, be compassionate with everyone you come in contact with. Also remember, God has empowered us to be extraordinary, not just average. Go be great this week for the Lord. God bless you and God keep you. Not a second, nor another minute, not an hour of another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, Lord, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before through a window or an open door i stretch my hands to thee come rescue me i need you right away i need you Hey, wait.
Right.